Hill launched a uh, documentary, Promises and Lies, the ANC Exile and Project Freedom. Today, the project moves to the University of Johannesburg, where former ANC Treasurer Dr. Matthews Poser will deliver a keynote address on ANC freedom fighters living in exile. Dr. Poser has his own personal experiences of exile, but most recently, he's accepted a nomination by ANC Ward 52 to be the next president of the ANC and eventually, hopefully, the country. He joins us now in studio. Good to have you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. Let's talk firstly about the exhibition. I mean, we've been looking at some really beautiful photographs as I was reading the introduction um, of this exhibition. Why is the story of the ANC freedom fighters in exile still important today? Well, I think uh, as South Africans, we need to continue to revisit the past so we understand where we came from. We mm. have to understand where we need to go to because um, it's a, those people need to be celebrated who made those great sacrifices for our democracy and for all of us. They never fought for themselves. They fought for the people, yeah. for the masses, to create a, a new environment for South Africans to be free. Mm. So we shouldn't be afraid to look at the past and re-examine ourselves, especially given the, the tense political situation we are today. Yeah. I'm mm. going to talk about that in a short while, but you were in exile. What was it like for you? Well, exile is like prison. You know, it's not home. You're getting shelter in foreign land. you in many cases, uprooted and dislocated from, from your family. I mean, I left my, my wife and a five-year-old child yeah. to run to exile. Not because I wanted to stay away from home. And so it happened to many, many, many co colleagues who went to exile from the ANC, from the PAC. You know, families can tell you traumatic stories of abuse of, their, uh, of themselves when their husbands or wives were, had left. Mm. And mm. Uh, you, you, only human, you think about what you left behind. But in a way, it inspires you to fight on. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it appears that that's what a lot of people are doing, and particularly people like yourself, the stalwarts, that are almost coming back up into a leadership position where you could kind of feel almost, all right, you know, maybe I've had enough of this and, and I'm just going to uh, step away from the political arena and let it be. But it almost appears as if you need to get back in there. And I imagine that that is somewhat what's behind your acceptance of moving into the presidency. Is it? Or am I reading into things? Well, it's not just me. Many of the stalwarts feel things are going wrong. The one one group the MK Council, of which I'm a member of the steering committee, we just feel we're not going to look that way. We have a responsibility to ensure that the sacrifices which were made by so many in this country are not going to waste. The lives which were lost are not, were not lost in vain. We need to rescue and uh, unite the ANC and rebuild it again and uh, re restore the trust of our people in this noble organization as far as we're concerned. You talk about, in a previous interview, you spoke about that the ANC has, in a way, lost dignified leaders such as Mandela, such as Sisulu, who we just saw photographs of. Um, is, is that what you're hoping to bring back into, into the ANC, is what is perceived um, that dignity has been lost? Well, we've lost moral authority, and that's how we're viewed throughout Africa and throughout the world. The, our own people have lost trust in us, and we should humbly accept that and not run into denial. Because once we are in denial, we're not going to address the problem. And we need to restore that trust. It was a trust built over 106 years. And it's easy to destroy that. But it's, but it's very difficult to rebuild it. But it's, it's not a daunting task to us. We need to go back to the, the basics and build our ANC and unite it. Mm. And of course, those uh, moral leaders like Mandela, Susulu, or Artambo, you know, we must celebrate him even more uh, because this is his, his year, 100 years. They lived above the pettiness of today and the moral decay of today. Your nomination has come from, uh, let me have a look again, I think it was Ward 52, is that correct? Well, they express an intention. So they express an intention. To so nominate me once the process of the ANC is open. And that's and in June. And accepted it, yeah. And that's in June. So that's you have accepted it. Yeah, the, the intention to, to nominate me, I've accepted it. So, yes. do, I mean, in, in all reality, when June does come, you, you could very well be in the running for this position. Why you? What, what, what do South Africans look to you? Perhaps uh, you could give us a reason. Why would we want you to be the next ANC president? What do you have? 
Well, I wish the masses were here. Maybe you'll ask them. You must look on Facebook and everywhere. They've got all sorts of reasons. But for me, it's, a, it's very humbling. It's not about me. It's about us having to defend the values of our movement as enshrined in the Freedom Charter and also uh, almost co codified in our constitution. And therefore to defend our constitution which gets daily violated and, and, and trampled on. Every day, I mean, the constitutional court has spoken on these matters repeatedly. Um, so we need to protect that constitution and ensure that we introduce strong good governance. We grow the economy and not kick away foreign direct investment. We must attract it. Give every South African a reason to stay here and not to go to other countries uh, for looking for greener pastures. People feel insecure. And it's a reality we must confront and not uh, look, look the other way. And give people a sense of security in this country. And not only physical security, but also feeling that this is a good investment destination. Mm -hmm. But we need to create the grow economy to, in order to create jobs. Right now we're losing thousands of jobs. And uh, we are in young status. We are at fault. And we need to correct those faults. Yeah, yeah. If we talk, if we talk about um, a court case, you talk about the Constitution, we talk about court cases. We just saw now uh, that you've uh, come out of a court uh, challenge. Well, in fact, it was thrown out of court um, after a, a defamation case brought by Mabuza towards you. Um, does this again make you feel right? OK, this is it. My, my road now to the presidency perhaps is a little bit cleaner and that I don't let, have to worry about let, these let me, allegations against me. Let me tell you, in politics, and it's part of the game, there will always be smear, fake news. So it's naive to say that there will be no one who will want to smear me. It, it, you've been childish to think that way. But Mabuza was taking a big chance. I mean, uh, really, he, was, uh, he defamed me according to the judgment. But I was paying him, uh, give him a bit of fresh air, and not honor him with a legal action for suing him. But I've got many important things to do in my business and in my life. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break here on the program. We'll continue this conversation <laughs> if you don't mind. So um, if you would like to have uh, any of your questions answered, if you'd like to uh, tweet us, send an opinion, you're more than welcome to as well. At Morning Live SABC, our conversation with uh, Matthew Spozer continues after this break. Do stay tuned.